Jesus is my savior, Trump is my president. What does that mean to you? Jesus died on a cross to forgive us for all our sins. Um, How do you think Donald Trump will be remembered in history? Well, it depends on who you're asking. Yeah. If I, if I ask you, how do you think Donald Trump's going to be remembered in history? Probably one whole page of the history book where it just says mugshot right there. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and that is from your side of the table. Well, history is usually written by the winners. And Joe Biden won. Well, and, and I'll let you go with that. Trump supporters still cannot accept that this man lost in 2020. This is Trump 2020, make liberals cry again. But Trump's the one who's not in office. So the liberals were happy about the 2020 election. So if there is a group that's crying about it, it would be conservatives. He was first elected and we were trying to, in 2020, we were trying to make that happen again, make them cry again. But then he lost. He lost, right. And now they're doing everything they can possible to stop him from even running in 24. But if you had to say who's been crying about the 2020 election, who would it be? I want to ask you about your hat, ma'am. FJB, right? I, I know what it stands for. I know it just. I know what it stands for. Um, tell me, how much of this is about that, right? And how much of this is about owning the libs being out here? Well, what I'm most disappointed about is that our our president definitely has dementia or something, and he's not capable of running this country. Something has to be done. It's actually very embarrassing. Every time he's on TV, he's tripping. He doesn't know which way to go. He's you know, it's it's just sad. We just need change and everybody. So would you be OK with another Democrat, a younger Democrat? Um, a lot of people have told me that they're they want to own the libs. They want to come <laughs> here to prove the libs are ruining the country and they want to own the libs. Can you tell me what owning the libs means to you? <laughs> prove them wrong <laughs> because they're wrong about a lot of things. Um, and, you know, I don't think they even necessarily mean to be wrong. They just don't know what's right. And give me one example. <laughs> um, okay, well, there's too many examples. I don't know. I can't think of one off the top of my head. There's, there's so many. many. There's got to be one. <laughs> um, something that they are wrong about. Owning the liberals is, I never thought that we would even be here standing, even talking about liberals. Meaning? Um, we're, we're so left. We're so left. I just pray that the country turns around and we become one nation under God again. What is it about liberals in America that upsets you? As far as liberals, I would venture to say just the ones I've spoken to and I have, they have no clue. My biggest fear right now is nothing is in place or I don't know if anything's in place to not have the, the election stolen again. That's my biggest fear. So you think it was stolen last time? Absolutely. Now that we understand the litigation efforts by President Trump and his allies, I'd like to present additional actions taken by the Trump campaign during this time. President Trump continued to push the stolen election narrative, even though he and his allies knew that their litigation efforts, making the same claim, had failed. It's worth pointing out that litigation uh, generally does not uh, continue past the safe harbor date of December 14th. Uh, but the fact that this litigation went on, well, that decision makes more sense when you consider the Trump campaign's fundraising tactics. Because if the litigation had stopped on December 14th, there would have been no fight to defend the election and no clear path to continue to raise millions of dollars. Mr. Chairman, at this time, I'd ask for unanimous consent to include in the record a video presentation describing how President Trump used the lies he told to raise millions of dollars from the American people. These fundraising schemes were also part of the effort to, to disseminate the false claims of election fraud. Without objection, so My name is Amanda Wick, and I'm senior investigative counsel with the House Select Committee to investigate the January 6th attack on the United States Capitol. Between Election Day and January 6th, the Trump campaign sent millions of fundraising emails to Trump supporters, sometimes as many as 25 a day. The emails claimed the, quote, left-wing mob was undermining the election, implored supporters to, quote, step up to protect the integrity of the election, and encouraged them to, quote, fight back. But at the end of the day, so much of what you see is MAGA Republicans just wanting to stick it to the libs. It's really not more complicated than that. 
So, you know, you don't even really need to ask if they actually believe the big lie. It's it, it it's part of their brand. It's part of their ideology at this point. Trump is their figurehead. And look, listen, I keep saying and I'm going to continue to say Donald Trump's biggest problem is that the election isn't next month. He's already lost his civil case in New York. He has to beat 91 felony charges, which ain't happening. That he's he's not going to beat all of those charges. The only thing that remains to be seen is What's going to happen? Is he going to go to prison? Is he going to get house arrest? What's actually going to go down? Because at the end of the day, he's really not in a good position. It's a race to the bottom. You know, Biden, if he does a couple of things here and there, his poll numbers will stick up and people will show up to the polls. Democrats have been overperforming in the polls, primarily because the Republican Party is absolutely atrocious. You know, we're going to pass these six week bans. We're going to make it so that you can't vote. Stuff like that. And that's beating them out. But just like normal, it's another race to the bottom. And again, Donald Trump, mm, I just don't see him beating all the all, all these felonies. I, I just don't see it. I, I don't see how he's actually going to put together a really good general election campaign. Who's he going to hire? Who's going to want to be attached to that campaign? Look at the lawyers that he has right now. So let's see how this really pans out. Take it a day at a time. But if you ask me, Donald Trump's finished.